Welcome to the van. I'm going to show you how these seats swivel around. <coughs> and these countertop extensions reach out to maximize countertop space. All right, so here's a step up. I have it tucked away in a hidden so that it doesn't hit any medians or boundaries because I know some of the steps are quite large. And then both the captain's and passenger seat swivel around. And you see that countertop extension is kicked out now. And this one I'll do the same in a moment. I hit the control panel down low because when I'm sleeping in the back, I don't want those lights blaring. And then we have the, the knobs for the LED lights. The top one is for the home zone all the way back. <clears throat> and the front one is for the front zone. So if you're just wanting to do some reading up front, have the lights off out back, vice versa. You can maximize on that. You'll notice I hit all the seams with these custom leather strips. In the front, it's all custom built woodwork for the upper cabinet, which is cubby style and reaches all the way back in there. These are all the blackout insulating curtains. They're all matching. It's just like this one up top where the vent fan is, which is DC controlled powered. And it can pull air through or push air through. There's a little cubby here for a bottle of wine. And then anything up front is really just your standard ProMaster. Although I did add uh, aftermarket cruise control. This is a custom made copper backsplash, just cause I wanted one. And then in here in the drawers, I added hidden drawers everywhere I could just to maximize on capacity. And then up under here is the receiver for the LED lights, which you can do on strobe effect. You can choose a specific color, you can dim, and they're tucked up under here where you don't see them. Um, at nighttime, it makes for a really nice ambiance. Up here, we have the single upper cabinet. I did it that way because I wanted the visual to look clean. And we have custom sized cubbies with a little window view for each so that you can have easy view of what's in there. Back here is the shower, toilet area, has a nature's head composting toilet and retractable self squeegeeing antimicrobial door, which goes into that little pocket. The nature's head toilet is vented out of the drain. When you're not using it and want to shower, you can just lift that whole thing out. Shower is completely wrapped in copper with a rain head and it has this detachable LED motion sensor light. I did it that way so you can recharge it through the DC power USB. Um, you can also do it just a manual mode where you can switch it on and off and it's dimmable. Back here we have the dinette slash bedroom. This is on a swivel arm so you can swivel this whole thing that way or at the back. And then these have built-in blackout curtains, insulating curtains, and bug screens if you were to push them up. And they're awning style windows, so they open this way. So that when it rains, you can still have the windows open, pulling a breeze through without the rain coming in. Each bench has components under it. This one is the electrical bench. This one is the water reservoir and pump. The water is all located along this one side of the van including the sink, which has a mobile sprayer hose. You can switch to just running and you can flip it outside if you wanna shower out back. This is the designated drinking water tap, which if you look underneath here, has a very robust RV drinking water. This is just the backup diesel for the diesel heater 
and then the electrical water heater, which you need an ample amount of electricity plugged into for that to work. You'll notice I added drawers everywhere I could, and the sides of the drawers are actually see-through, so they let light through it to leave a much more open feeling. And this is just a rod to keep everything in while you're driving or parked on a slope. Here we have a kitchen strainer, whether you're drying dishes, washing veggies, I just want to put some things there and move them or put them in here while you drive. Um, super useful and it was very important for me to have a full-size kitchen sink so if I wanted to wash clothes or store things or do dishes prep meals um, soap dispenser a big mirror where you can sit and do your toiletry things um, you can change check out your clothes and it's positioned here so that you can actually sit in this passenger seat and utilize it a um, little shelf up top you notice details like how in the back this is all just buttoned up really nice with custom woodwork and then let me show you some more of these drawers so these drawers back here have dividers for separating your clothes i like to store them file style so you can see all the clothes same down here more dividers and again, just drawers, wherever I could fit them. There's a similar drawer going out the back to store houses and such. And in here, I have the fridge freezer and I have it with that extra lock because it's a very heavy drawer and it needs to be locked when it's driving. This is Dometic fridge freezer. You can run off AC or DC current. I have it wired for both, though I just, Use the AC to charge it initially, and the DC when it's in RV mode. <clears throat> Hidden drawer up top, store a lot of kitchen items, nesting bowls, silicone ice cube trays, portable blender. <clears throat> now in the back, back in there, they have it wired with another AC plug in case you do want to, in case you do want to cut in um, an induction stove top, which could be cut in right here, in which case this would be taken out and you would line this with tin foil, um, which is why I designed it like that. I personally like to use my portable Coleman two top propane stove, which is stored on here, so that I can use this as counter space when I'm not using it. Um, I can vent out cooking through there. And I could just take it out and put it on a picnic table if need be. So let's flip around. Let's kick this out. So now you see we're maximizing countertop on both sides, in which they're both easily collapsible. With these little press buttons. All right, I'm gonna show you some different setups. I call this the living room setup because you have a place here for your laptop or if you'd like to install a projector screen here. I left this without uppers because when you're sitting at the couch, I didn't want you to feel crowded and there's plenty of storage elsewhere, but also because this is a perfect place for a projector screen and this would be obviously the couch area. You'll notice up here there's two little screws where a closed drying rack hangs and it's custom fit for the closed drying rack that's stored in here. I'll show you that setup in just a moment. But let me show you these. Bug screen, fully open, awning style with two settings. Again, so when it rains, you can still leave these open for a breeze. This was quite an extra cost for these windows, but totally worth it. Something I'm very glad I did. Obviously I've cut in and created copper shelving. Each of these have a little lip, so that if you're storing something in there, it won't fall out while you're driving. And then up above, we have a Mabru DC powered air conditioner unit. 
and the thing is incredible. You do want to be plugged in to the grid when using it uh, or have a generator. Down here you'll see uh, the access for the fuse panel where everything's labeled, fuses and such. And then this comes off to get even deeper if you want to change things around. And let me show you from this position what everything looks like. It's quite cozy and warm. I kept a lot of the, I kept all the cabinets white just to leave the space feeling more open. Although I loved the deep earth tones of the wood and the stain and the tongue and groove because I wanted it to feel like you're still part of nature. And then the copper backsplash because it's very alchemical um, in its appeal. So it adds a lot of texture and ambiance, especially when at night when the LED lights or candle lights are bouncing off of that, it makes for a really spectacular feel. Let me show you another setup. Here's another way I love to have the back end set up. I call it cafe style so that you don't have to be crawling between a table here if it's just you and one other person. You can put your food there, work there, hang out there, whatever you'd like to do. But cafe style is a nice way to set up for just hanging out. I'll just show you into the water reservoir bench. Any little extra space that could be had I built storage containers for. This is where I have my front windshield cleaning kit and my ice scraper, snow duster, um, extra pellets for the nature's head composting toilet medium. And you'll see the reservoir goes all the way back in there, 32 gallons of water. And I wanted to build this box here to keep um, the container in because when you fill it it expands so now it won't and so it'll keep the longevity of your tank um, the fill valve when you're filling it from outside comes there fills it up obviously we have our water pump and it diverts it all to the back we do have some shut off valves in various locations for convenience and then here is that clothes drying rack I mentioned. If you open either side, pull it all out. You have a perfect convenient place to set out some clothes to dry or dry herbs or whatever you'd like. And it shuts back in and I store that in there when I'm not using it. So now we're in the electrical bench side. Again, any extra storage I could spare. I built storage boxes in, so this is a great place to store your pillows when you're not using them. And I'd say it's about eight inches deep, plenty of room in there. And I will pull that out so you can see the electrical system. Here you'll see the electrical system, I used a lot of our energy products. So here's a sine wave inverter, there's a DC to DC battery charger, so excess power from the front fan engine can be routed back here to the batteries. Here's our breaker box. This is for solar. It uh, takes the solar from the roof, puts it into the batteries. There are five very large batteries here. Main on off switch, positive negative bus bar, and little uh, inline fuses in case you want to pop one so that, let's say you don't want to use the DC to DC charger or you're working on that system. Or let's say it just trips. This is to protect your system and an easy way to turn it back on when it's ready. This all connects to a shore power line that goes out of the back where you can plug into 30 amp and charge the whole system. It charges pretty fast and that's electrical. I have plenty of solar up top. Every inch I could spare has flexible solar panels. Flexible so that if it's hit by a branch or you hit a big bump, that they won't shatter. Now here we are in bed mode. The back two couch cushions come in to form the middle. The table drops down, sits on a couple of grooves. 
It's very sturdy. I'm over 200 pounds and it holds me quite easily. And I've had plenty of people hanging out here, playing cards, enjoying conversation. It's a very cozy space. I normally put um, a mattress cover on top, which is just like a fitted sheet with a pad. Then I put a fleece or jersey fitted sheet over it. And then I put my duvet and my pillows and it becomes quite the nest back here. I'll show you from the back view looking in. Here it is from the back view looking in. Whether you want to set it like a bed and look at the view, park at the beach, at the campground, set it up like a table, however you want, you can use it. I'm looking through, here's what it looks like. And then here's the drawer for the hoses and the extension cord. And then over here is the shore power plug. I hit it down there so that it's not very noticeable. And then there's the muffler for the DC powered diesel heater. Let me come around and show you the water fill valve. And then I wanted to point out a couple more things. I built a little step here with some storage with a mini vac fire extinguisher. I did this because there's a big metal step here and I wanted it to look, I wanted to find ways to blend the house to the cab and make it look seamless and beautiful. So I did that with the use of some lines and contours back here, so it directs the eye around. And then here is the vent for the diesel um, heater, and it works so well. Even though it's a tiny little vent, I wanna say in below freezing temperatures, in about two and a half minutes, I had it warm and toasty in here, and everything is insulated with two types of insulation, three types. There's the thick foam boards that live under here, um, and then these are the uh, plank style vinyl flooring. Let's see, let me show you that. And those go all the way back throughout. Those are waterproof, very durable, and with the movement of the road, uh, they work really well to stay in place. And what else can I tell you? Oh, insulation. There's spray foam insulation for the walls and then for the doors and anywhere that you might need to access electronics or, or ever need to do maintenance instance like back here in these grooves they're easily they're easily detachable each of those are just held by a single screw same with the one up top so if any wiring needs to be looked at they can come off and then there's havelock wool insulating all those and the doors and everything i did that instead of plexiglass uh, i'm sorry fiberglass insulation like you would have in the attic because every time the door is slammed i don't want to agitate that and breathe it in i want it to be safe for your health. And I don't think there's anything else. I think that's it. Hope you've enjoyed the tour. It's been lovely having you. Um, actually, I will show you the setup with the blackout curtains so that you can see how private it gets inside. So I wanna show you this window with the closed door. I positioned everything this way because when I'm at a sink, I love looking out a window. I think we're all kind of wired for that with how they're used in houses. This window, I made it so that it didn't open. For me, it felt a little more secure that way. I'd rather those open for breeze paired with this fan pulling breeze through. I'm even opening those a little bit if you need. And now I'm gonna show you with all the insulating blackout curtains. So here's the setup with the insulating blackout curtains. As you can see, the entire van and home are now a completely private space. So if you're looking to sleep in the day or sleep where there's bright lights or campgrounds, don't wanna be disturbed, then this is such a beautiful setup because I'm equally as introverted as I am extroverted and sometimes I just want to be in my own little sanctuary in here. Um, they also work excellent for insulation. Before I got these, it was really hard to keep it warm in here at a consistent temperature without using the diesel heater all the time. 
Um, but now that I got these, it heats up so fast and it stays warm and the diesel heater kicks off often because it stays at temperature a lot easier. I'll show you a couple other colors on this just because I think it's fun. You have all kinds of color options. You feel like you're at your own little disco. It really does set the mood wonderfully. Thank you for doing this van tour with me. It's been a pleasure showing you around and I hope it is a beautiful home for the next driver. And I've enjoyed many adventures in this. I've loved it. <sighs> it's really been such a dream living in this. I've lived in it for 15 months. I'm ready for my next adventure, but I cherish and take all these memories with me and have learned so much about freedom along the way. And if you want a few recommendations and places to check out, check out the Redwoods in Northern California, Jedediah Smith State Park. Um, just near the Oregon border is beautiful. And then there's plenty of other places. National Park's a wonderful glacier up in Montana, Yellowstone, um, the beach, visiting friends. It's just really spectacular for any occasion. Um, so a few things that I did in here that were important to me. Um, I love design and I love designing a space that has flow. So every line that you see, even from the insulating curtains, to the tongue and groove, to the lines on the retractable door for the shower. Every line is intentionally placed uh, because I wanted your eye to be directed around and never feel like it's just stopping in a dead space. And it really creates for a feeling of peace and calm in a space where it doesn't feel like chaos. Um, it was important for me to leave the visuals very simple. So even though they're very elegant, there's not like 20 upper cabinet doors. There's not like a bunch of latches and locks showing on everything um, because again, I want it to feel at home and I want it to feel like a simple, peaceful, safe space, a sanctuary. Um, all of the pools for the doors and the drawers are leather. That's intentional because when you rub up against them with your hip, you don't bruise your hip or tear your pockets. And another important thing was to have um, a drinking water filter and tap on board, um, just so that you don't have to go fill up at drinking water stations, although you can. And then the full size sink was imperative for me because that for me makes it feel like you're actually living in a home and a sustainable space that's not just a little getaway or a camping trip. You can use it for that, and it's super comfortable for that, um, but you can also use it as a home. What else? The swivel seats were important to me because even though it seems like it just adds a little bit of space, in this space it makes it so much more open. So it, it essentially creates room for six people to sit and hang out and interact, um, which is important for me because I love to entertain. I love to have my family in here, my friends, make them tea, make them meals, go on adventures, and they've all loved it. And the other thing for the bathroom, the door being able to let light through, but still keeping it private was nice because it still keeps it feeling open. And if somebody needs to go to the bathroom while everyone's hanging out, they can feel a sense of privacy. And then what else? LED lights everywhere. You can tell they're dimmable because I love setting the mood. The lights are placed in a very particular way so that everything is lit up um, and that you don't have dead spots. And then, like I said, down here is the controller for the heater. There's also a little remote. So if you're back in bed and want to change it, turn it on, off, raise or lower the temperature, you can do that without getting up. And then the battery monitor and then the in inverter switch to turn it on and off. You have DC plugs, you have AC plugs, USB plugs. I put DC um, plugs in various accessible places because it draws a lot less battery from the home battery and it conserves your energy so that you can be off the grid a lot longer. I wanna say I have successfully been off the grid with 
the solar and my fridge running on DC and being able to use a fan and the lights, I want to say in a really sunny weather, you can get away with actually just being off grid. Um, but if you've got some overcast or it's like winter and overcast on a fully charged battery with some driving, you can get away for about a week before needing to plug in, which you are also welcome just to put a generator on board and put one of those hitches on the back and put a generator there and you could be off grid forever if you'd like. So that's the tour. I don't think there's anything else to show you. Although I will give you one last view of this beautiful space. My name is Levi and I have designed and built this van and I'm very excited to share it with you. Welcome to the tour. So the view from the captain's seat. I wanted this shower bathroom to look like mid-century modern style, kind of a portal as well. And so you'll see this repeated theme of rounded rectangular, rectangular shapes, just so that there doesn't feel like there's any harsh um, ambiance in here. Everything just stays gentle and calm and soft for the eye.